Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a new year, so happy new year to everybody. There is just so much happening right now. It's like a whirlwind, I can't believe it. So I have a few things to tell you about. First of all, our first pre-sale for yarns and hand-dyed robings and comb top was amazing. So I thank you so much for your support on that. In a few months, we are going to be featured in Happily Hooked magazine. They got a few skeins of yarn and they're going to feature us in an upcoming issue. Also, Jacquard picked me as one of their new featured artists on their website. I will leave a link in the description below for that. I will also leave a link in the description for Happily Hooked Magazine so you can check out the very first article I ever wrote for them. It's called Save the World, Save the Wool. It was from their April issue of 2019. Now we're going to be in another issue coming up in a few months. I'd love for you to check that out. And also if you could go check out the page for me on Jacquard's website, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check out the featured artist page with my picture and a little bio and all these pictures for a gallery at the bottom. It's so exciting. I'm so excited, guys. So and aside from that, guess what? We have our very first sponsor, like a real sponsor. They're a yarn company that provides bases for dyers like me and you. And they sent us a bunch of yarn to play with. It's so exciting. Nomad Yarns. So they sent us, check these out. I really, really am enjoying these. They sent me one of every sock yarn that they have and a few others. This beautiful blend right here is, this is Nomad Yarn. This is the Steam 80% fine superwash merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, 100 grams, 191 yards, 175 meters, two ply worsted Aran weight made in Peru. Look at the ply. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful bases. The next one, oh, they're so soft guys. This one is called Spark. It is 100% fine organic merino wool, 100 grams, 219 yards, 200 meters, four ply worsted Aran weight. Then we have, I love this one. I love the ply on this. It's like a nice smooth yarn versus a textured. This one is called Stratus. It is 80% extra fine merino wool, 20% nylon, 100 grams, 437 yards, 400 meters, four ply fingering sock weight. And then we've got three more. We've got sandstone. Again, beautiful smooth ply on that. These are 80% extra fine superwash merino wool, 10% mulberry silk, 10% cashmere, 100 grams, 437 yards, 400 meters, four ply, fingering, sock weight made in Peru. Love this one, it's so soft. You can definitely feel the cashmere and the silk in this. It's very, very pretty. Then we've got two more. We've got Snowdrift. Again, with the nice plying, nice smooth yarn. It is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, 100 grams, 437 yards, 400 meters, four ply fingering sock weight. And last but not least, we've got eggshell. I love this one too. They're all nice, like you can't go wrong. I highly suggest going and finding them. I will, again, leave links in the description below so you can find them on Facebook. They have their own website, so I will leave a link in the description for that as well so you can go check them out. We're going to be using some of these in our color theory tutorial, and we're going to hand paint some rainbows. Oh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be such a good year, guys. Today, we're going to be doing a color theory class. I know I've been talking about that a lot recently and I got all those orders that I wasn't expecting so I had to put this on the back burner for a little while but we are back and we are so ready to do it. So color theory. I have here a color wheel that I made way back in high school for art class. Now I know that all of you are taught this color model 
for your primary colors. This is actually a half truth. When they're talking to you about primary colors, they are right in a way about it being red, yellow, and blue. But that is when you are looking at the world around you and it has to do with light. Either light reflecting and bouncing back to your eyes or light being absorbed into whatever object that you're looking at and then the light is reflected back to your eyes. It makes the cones in your eyes shoot, making you see color. Color is really just an illusion as it is. It isn't actually really even there. It's the information around you that your eyes are trying to process along with your brain so you can look at the world around you and see this physical reality, so to speak. But in all actuality, it's all an illusion and these colors aren't even really real to begin with. I know, so cool, right? When you are dying, you want to take into account your primary pigments not your primary colors. It's as simple as looking in your printer and looking at the ink that they use. They use magenta, cyan, yellow, and black as a toner. So that's what we're going to be doing today in our video, hand painting some roving. We're gonna do the after the storm colorway on some rovings because I still have a few more I have to get out. And we're going to do that on some yarn so I can show you how it all works. But to get back into magenta, cyan, and yellow and why you shouldn't be mixing the red, yellow, and blue when it comes to pigments, okay? So for example, red. Red is a combination of magenta and yellow. So something you really need to think about is when you're dying, you do not want to put complementary colors next to each other. You will end up with a brown, muddy mess. Unless that's what you want. If you want to create a brown or even a black, go for it and bleed your colors. But you're normally not trying to do that. You're normally trying to make sure that you have nice, bright, clean colors that aren't mudded out because you placed the wrong colors next to each other. You wanna think of it like this. Red is a combination of yellow and magenta. So if you were to put red and blue, which are complementary colors, to mix purple, you'll actually get a very mudded out version of purple versus if you use magenta and cyan, you will end up with a beautifully bright violet, purple, whatever color you're really going for. It's all according to how much of each pigment you use. This is obviously something that I should have covered a way long time ago, but we're getting to it now. I will show you when we're actually dying how this actually works, but I hope that I explain that good enough that you can understand it. Throw away your idea of the primary colors, and we're thinking of primary pigments, just like your printer, magenta, cyan, and yellow. To do magenta, cyan, and yellow, I know that they don't call it that in the dyes, but we are going to be using hot fuchsia as magenta. You can also use pink. We'll be using turquoise as the cyan and we'll be using sun yellow as the yellow. So we're going to be using all jacquard acid dyes. I will leave a link in the description below of where you can get your own jacquard acid dyes if you want some. So just make sure that you keep these things in mind. If you don't, you could really mess it up. As long as you remember your primary pigments, magenta, cyan, and yellow, and that they are not yellow, red, and blue, you will do perfectly fine and you will be able to make some amazing colors. Okay, in order to demonstrate what I mean on paper, I got one of these awesome Crayola mini marker sets, neon marker set. And it just so happens to come with cyan, yellow, and magenta, and a little color card that is actually super helpful in teaching exactly how to make all of your different colors. Now, it would be the same exact thing with dye. If you wanted to make a teal, a purple, any of these, you need to use a certain amount of each pigment and you can get literally every single color of the rainbow according to which colors you use. I'm going to demonstrate really quickly on paper how we get a whole rainbow of colors from just these primary pigments. Just to show you, I'm not lying, and that we were told a half-truth as we were growing up. 
about red, blue, and yellow, which is actually sort of annoying. So we have magenta, cyan, and yellow. So we'll do the cyan first. This is also great. I would recommend getting this and using it with the kids and teaching them this early so they aren't told a half-truth for their whole life because I would really love for kids to know about this. It would make a lot of sense for them and it would help them very much with art class and all of that stuff. Now we will add the pink and that will create the purples, lilac, all of those different colors. As you can see when those touch, we've got our purple. If you have more blue, you'll get more towards the violet end of the spectrum. And if you have more pink, you'll get more of that lilac color. And yellow. Ooh, that is a neon yellow. So as you can see, that creates our green, our teal, our red, our orange. It's all according to how much of each color you have. And then when all of those colors mix together, you get your black. So literally every single color of the rainbow from one, two, three colors plus black or gray for toning, just like your printer. So we'll put down some hot fuchsia and touch that to the yellow. You will get from orange to red. See all those different colors already? As you can see over here, we're getting the oranges. And now we're going to do that with the blue and pink. Make that touch the pink. You can see we get purple, we get magenta, we just, we get a whole array of colors, so on and so forth. Also dark blue is in there, as you can see. If you use just a dab of the magenta with the blue, you'll get a dark blue. Now I'm going to show you why you don't use red. And because that didn't work as well as I would like it to on paper, we're just gonna use some markers really quick and I will show you with markers what I mean. So you can have a visual. Magenta, cyan, and yellow. Now red, I'm sure you can tell, is a combination of pink and yellow. So what do we know? We know to not put complementary or contrasting colors together because you'll end up with a mudded out color, a black, a brown, stuff like that. So I will demonstrate here. Our magenta. Right now the magic is going to happen and we're going to get purple. Then our yellow. Here's our green. I'm going to make these touch purposefully so I can show you that black in the center. Obviously, the more blue you have, you'll get more of a teal. The more yellow you have, you'll have more green, seafoam green, so on and so forth. You can also get your dark blues from adding just a smidge of magenta and blue. You'll get more of that brilliant blue that they have. Now I'm going to show you why you do not use red. You will never ever get that kind of a purple. You will never get vibrant colors if you use red, blue, and yellow. It applies to daily life, the light bouncing off of everything around you and either being absorbed or reflected to your eyes. Your eyes have cones in them. They are the red, blue, and green cones. And when they fire, it shows you a color which is actually not even there. That's why we end up seeing color. So now, blue and red. You ready for this to get ugly? Ready? It's almost black. Does that look purple to you guys? Didn't think so. That's more of our black in the center up here. 
See what I mean? It's the same color. You're ending up with all three colors in here as it is. You've got pink and yellow in the red, and then you've got the cyan. So when you put them together, you end up with black because again, this is all of the primary colors. So now I'll add yellow to that even though I've made my point. Obviously that will make orange, but you can never make pink from these three colors. Ain't no way. So I hope that demonstrates it for you in a way that you can understand. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, how do we apply that to dyeing yarn and our roving? Also, I changed hats. I want to let you guys know if you like this pattern. I am going to be doing a tutorial on this very soon. This will be called the Golden Ratio Bun Beanie. It's got this cool swirling pattern. You can also make it as a regular hat, obviously, but I obviously need the bun beanies because of all this hair, but I will be doing a tutorial for the Golden Ratio Bun Beanie very soon. So remember your safety when you do this. You are going to need your gloves and also remember to wear a pair of shoes that aren't mesh just in case you happen to drip a little bit onto your foot because I did that a while back and I was wearing my track running sneakers that are mesh. Thank God they're black, but I got a little dabble of pink on my toe and my toe was dyed pink for a good while. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're wearing a nice sturdy pair of shoes. I like to wear my leather clog things actually because nothing can get through there. Just keep that in mind. Pull your hair back and make sure you've got all your dye stock ready. If you want to get your own bottles like these, I'll leave a link in the description. It really helps, especially if you have a ton of orders to use big bottles like this so you're not wasting your time refilling, refilling, refilling when you have little bottles like this. And the gauge of the hole on these is a little bit bigger, so you get a little bit more pouring out. And just be aware that when you go to tip the bottle, you want to hold on to the tip and make sure that you don't dabble all over the place. You just want to be aware of that sometimes that that can happen. Should I put my gloves on? First, we're going to put our gloves on. Make sure you've got your press and seal cling wrap. This is the kind I like to use. It's a little bit more sturdy than regular cling wrap. So how do we apply color theory to dyeing yarn and roving? You will also want to have a few sponges at your side so you can sop up any extra dye that you may have laid down because you definitely don't want too much dye on there. If you do happen to get anything on your counters, get yourself some totally awesome cleaner. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it takes everything off. I mean, bleach will work, but I'd much rather not use bleach. So totally awesome cleaner gets all of that off. Alcohol would get it off too, but totally awesome cleaner gets it all off. So you have nothing to worry about there. So you want to lay out your cling wrap. I let this roving soak for about 24 hours in citric acid and a little synthropol. You can find out how much citric acid you need to use at dharmatrading.com. I will leave a link in the description below for that as well. And you'll be good to go. Just make sure that you let blends with silk sit for a little bit longer. Let that soak for a good couple of hours to overnight. I let mine soak for a full day. Take it out and squeeze all the water out. Do not wring it or you could ruin your fiber. Make a little ball if you can in your hands and squeeze it out as much as possible. And I'll show you how I like to lay mine out. I like to do it the way I would do a skein of yarn. So you also want to keep in mind that if you're using a comb top versus a roving, you want to steam it versus put it in water because you can ruin your fiber if you stick comb top in water and try to dye it that way. You're much better off steaming it in a steam pan and putting it in some cling wrap and protecting it. Next, we're going to squeeze out the excess water from the fiber that I have soaking right now. 
It's a 50-50 merino silk blend. And we are going to paint the After the Storm colorway on it. And we're going to end up with a whole rainbow of colors using only Jacquard's Hot Fuchsia, Jacquard's Turquoise, Jacquard's Sun Yellow, and Jacquard's Gray Silver. I will leave a link in the description below for all of these dyes, for the bottles, everything. So you can get all the stuff you need. Remember your silicone zip ties for on your roving. I like it so I can one, color code my roving, and two, it's a lot easier to move things around when you're washing it after, et cetera, et cetera. So I am going to take out one of the four ounce braids I have. You just want to Kind of ball it up in your hand and squeeze the water out. You definitely don't want to wring it because you could ruin your roving or comb top rather. This is a comb top, 50-50 merino silk comb top. I will also leave a link in the description below as to where I got this. I got this 50-50 merino silk from Taku Fiber on Etsy and it's always awesome. I have been getting it for years. They always have awesome stuff there so I would recommend that. Just make sure you get everything out water wise not every last drop because you want that little bit of water in there so it's easier for the dye to take it breaks that water membrane with that synthopol in there too it's easier for the dye to penetrate that's why you use the synthopol as well as if you have excess dye on your yarn or your fiber after it will make sure it suspends that dye in the water while you're washing it so you don't get that back staining on your other colors. Synthropol is very much needed when you're dyeing with acid dyes, so make sure you get some of that. I will leave a link for that as well. Now we're going to lay this out. So these are my little silicone zip ties. Be wary of your dyes because god forbid you like to get a little bit on it i like to make sure that it's not all twisted up i like to make sure that it's laying flat just think of it like a skein of yarn i always like to make sure that i put my yellow on this corner so that when I roll this all up at the end, the yellow is kind of sitting up above all the other colors. So the other colors don't back bleed into it just in case. I also like to stick the yellow sort of on top when I roll it all up. I'll show you what I mean when I do it, but think about placement. Always think about everything that you're doing be very picky about placement. You want to make sure that it comes out perfect. You don't want to mud this up. You don't want to mess it up. You want the colors to be nice and clean. So what I like to start doing is I'll start with my pink and I'll put a little bit of silver because we're going to do like a silver from here to here. And then we're going to start with pink, go to the turquoise, go to the yellow, end with pink, and then have all silver right here. So when you spin it, you end up with a rainbow and then you have the silver gray. Make sure you have your sponges ready so you can sop up any extra dye that you might end up putting on there. I always like to make sure that I have like a towel around too so when I shake up my dyes I can rinse it off so I don't have dye everywhere. Then you want to start placing your dye but make sure that you're wary of this spilling. You don't want spillage, you don't want it to get everywhere so just be careful with that. You want to make sure you don't overdo it. So I like to put some in and then this is what I mean by the dye and bleed technique, or I'd say the dye squish and bleed technique. I like to put the dye on and make it bleed. Place your dye and squish and bleed. A few dribbles and this is why it's good to have a sponge within arm's reach. It's okay. It'll look cool when it transitions into the gray, so that's all right. There's no wrong in art, remember that. Now we're gonna wanna start creating that purple. So just like I showed you with those inks on that paper, we're going to mix the turquoise in 
I'm going to make purple. First, we want to make sure we put that silver over there so it doesn't keep bleeding on us. Place your silver. You don't need to do all of it. You just need to do some of it to make sure that it doesn't just keep bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. You need to think about where your placement's going to be before you actually do it. Be patient. Don't try to rush it. It's like everything in this. You need to be patient. You can't cut corners or else it will never be right. You can take your sponge, just pick up the excess dye so it doesn't go everywhere on you. Now we're going to start creating purple. So then place the turquoise next to the pink. And our purple is starting to come in. So this is what I'll do. I wanna make sure that down here, we've got more of the magenta lilac -y type of color. So I'll try to like bleed that pink into that purple. See, that's why you need this. Pick up that excess just in case. And I'm gonna add a little more pink over here. And then we'll bleed it so we get that gradient effect from the pink to the blue. Pick up your excess and keep on going. Start putting down that turquoise. Remember, don't overdo it. Dye, squish, bleed. Dye, squish, bleed. I kind of do like a rolling with my hand. Put the dye down, squish it down, bleed it over. Dye, squish, bleed. Dye, squish, bleed. See how we have that nice array of colors all ready? Woo! First person perspective really quick. I find myself, because I know I don't want you guys squishing, squishing, squishing too hard and accidentally felting, because I am very gentle when I do that squishing motion. Try gliding like this. And the colors will naturally blend. Just have to be patient. Like I'll put the color over at the end and then pull it like a squeegee. See? So now it goes from the hot pink to like the lilac hot purple and there's the regular purple the violet, darker blue, all that. So pretty. I do definitely want some more of that purple on this though. So I'm going to add some more pink to make this purple section a little bit bigger. And we're going to bleed that this way. Pick up your excess. Keep it going. This purple part bigger. It's so pretty. Just use your best judgment, you know? There's no wrong in art. There's never wrong in art, only happy mistakes, right? Didn't Bob Ross used to say that? <laughs> Taking one from Bob Ross's book, because it's true. So we've got nice purple transition. And we're going to go into dark blue and the turquoise. Don't worry, we'll be fine. This isn't gonna felt. I've done it so many times. <laughs> trust me, guys, trust me. I've actually taken the better part of the last two and a half years to learn all of this stuff, specifically because I feel like if I'm gonna do YouTube videos teaching you, I really need to know everything about everything. I wanted to make sure I knew so much about the subject that it was pretty much second nature. So when I did speak about it, I knew exactly what I was talking about. You know what I mean? And we definitely have a little more purple over here than I wanted, so look at This is why you want these. If you make a little bit of a mistake and you want to fix it, now we've got more pink again. And I kind of want to make this pink bleed into that gray a bit for that nice transition. We've got the hot fuchsia to the magenta to the lilac to the royal purple. 
to the violet to like a brilliant blue, a darker blue, the sky blue to turquoise. And then from turquoise, we're going to do just like we did on that piece of paper earlier. We're gonna go from turquoise to yellow, just like a regular rainbow. And create this beautiful array of colors here with just three colors, just like your printer. Have a little more of the silver over here. We're starting to get to the other end. So I usually wanna make sure that the pinks are kind of lined up. This I actually made go a little bit over to the side more a little bit. So I'm gonna carry it out a little bit more down here but not too much because again, this is going to keep bleeding. I can place a little bit of that pink, but I may not want to because next is yellow and yellow is very important. You need to be careful with the yellow because you can totally lose the yellow if you don't do it the right way and be mindful of placement and what you're doing. I know this is way more technical than you thought it was gonna be, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot of work, it really is. That's why I say I really don't even make enough for what I charge for this because this takes a really long time to do. I do it because I love it and I love you guys. Now turquoise and yellow, which is going to create the green. All right. And just be mindful of everything over here. You don't want to splash color everywhere, mess it all up. I've done that before and it hurts your soul when that happens. So up your excess. Now to make the green, I want to carry this out a little bit because I want to make sure that I have a good amount of green there. It's going to transition from the turquoise. So watch what happens when we add this yellow. Yellow is really the most important color to be mindful of because you can really mess up the yellow if you don't think about it. For some reason, this is the one dye that really doesn't like to fully disintegrate in the water. I always end up with like these pasty parts of dye in it, but that's okay. Nothing bad will happen. I just kind of smear it around. And again, we're gonna bleed, dye and bleed. Dye and bleed this way. Dye and bleed this way so we get those seafoam lime green colors. And then here we get the teal, emerald green, all those colors. So cool, right? Love it. It's like science to me. Absolutely beautiful. See why I call it the dye squish and bleed technique now? Make sure all your excess is soft up. Keep adding that yellow. And we're gonna go from yellow to pink again and create orange and red and go back to the hot fuchsia. When I'm done placing my dye, I like to take my sponges and sop up any extra dye that might be on the comb top or roving that you're dyeing, even the yarn if you do yarn, just in case, because when we go to wrap it up, if there's any extra dye in there, it can bleed all over the place. You may want intentional bleeding and you may not want intentional bleeding. It's all according to what you're making. Right now, I don't want intentional bleeding. I want the colors to stay where they are right now. Before I said I like to take the yellow and make sure that it's on a corner. So I'm just going to move everything a little bit and make sure that that yellow is sitting where I need it to be to prepare for when we go to wrap it up and put it in the pot so we can expose it to heat and set that dye. We're gonna wrap this up. Watch where I put the yellow to make sure that the colors don't just keep bleeding and we end up with a big black or brown mess. And also, when you go and you flip this, you might notice that you need a little bit more dye underneath. So if you do, just add what you need. Squish and bleed it. See what I mean by it kind of blurbing out of there? So be cautious with that. Make sure you don't need to add more on this side. This has been soaking up for a while. So yeah, this side really doesn't need as much of it, but it does need a little bit. We're gonna wrap this up. 
And remember, be mindful of the yellow. So I want it in this corner right here. Any corner really will work. You just want to be mindful of where everything is. And you start wrapping it up. Now see, when you go to wrap it, you're gonna squeeze dye out. So this is what I like to do. I take my sponges and I stick them there, especially so I don't lose this yellow right now. You wanna kinda pre-squish and bleed it a little bit to get that excess out. And the sponges are gonna sop it all up. You do that to everything, really. Wrap it. You're gonna make sure that this goes inside of this wrap, like around it over here. So we don't lose that yellow. Don't lose the yellow. Clean up the excess. Same thing for the other side. Wrap it, grab that excess. All right, now I have to take my sponges again, stick one here, stick one here, and we're gonna fold these sides. See all that dye coming out, so you want to sock that up. See how our yellow is going to sit on top of everything? That way nothing bleeds into it. Same thing on the other side. Put it through sponge. Wrap up this other side. Sponge it. Sponge is gonna soak it all up. Then wrap it. Now, when I twirl it up, I make sure that I take my yellow and I stick that on top. That way, nothing's gonna bleed into it. It's on the top. If anything, it's gonna bleed down. And you just take that and place it in your pot. I've got just your standard vegetable steaming pot and a lobster pot. Your goal is to reach 200 degrees. That's when the dye really starts to take to whatever you're dyeing. So that is your goal. You're going to want some sort of a liquid thermometer, meat thermometer. I'll leave a link in the description below for this one. This I got off Amazon, it works awesome. You just check every so often. Always use a medium to low heat. You don't wanna overdo it and ruin everything and burn it. So just be mindful always.